All right. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker. Hi, it's me. All right. Anyway, um, no, I'm actually not looking for applause, but um, I actually, I never know how to like introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mr. Carozo. I'm the Dean of Student Life, as probably all of you know. Um, and I'm going to be talking about temptation. I just mentioned one form of temptation, which would be go to go out those back doors. Um, but I'm going to talk about temptation as a whole, um, scriptural as well as within Smithtown Christian School. But before I do, I think it's important that we understand what temptation is. So I pulled up a definition. Temptation is the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. The desire to do something, especially something wrong. Uh, so I got caught up in that word wrong. First and foremost, has anybody ever had the temptation, the desire to do something wrong? All right, every single one of you should be raising your hands. By the way, this is, this is a two-way interaction this morning. Who has had the desire to do something wrong? Maybe lie? Maybe break out your cell phone while you're walking down the hallways here at Smithtown Christian School? I'm staring directly at someone who I know has broken out their cell phone before, and they're not raising their hands. All right, once again, this is a two-way conversation here. Who has had a desire ever to do something wrong? I'm raising my hand because I have had the desire to do something wrong. So you're, you're in, I'd say good company, but then I'm calling myself good. Um, but yeah, you're in good company. You're surrounded by everybody who's had the desire, had the temptation to do something wrong. But I got caught up in that word wrong. Um, and again, participation time. I'm going to come back to the word wrong. So we have a number of you, right? A number of you guys who drive here or who just drive as a whole. A number who are starting to learn how to drive a number who really, really want to learn how to drive, and then a number who go, I know what a car is, and eventually I'm going to get behind the steering wheel, right? So we all understand a little bit about driving. And we all live on Long Island. Again, this is participation time. So how many think the, the speed limit on the side of the road is a suggestion on Long Island? No, be honest, guys. Be honest. They're arbitrary. That's a solid word. Who's your English teacher? Mrs. Nuzo. Mrs. Nuzo. Outstanding job. And it was probably Mr. Pagan at one point. So Mr. Pagan, outstanding job as well. Um, I like <clears throat> arbitrary. I love it. So signs on the side of the road, speed limits are arbitrary. They are suggestions, or so we believe here, right? So I want to get a poll, right? So on the LIE, the speed limit on Long Island is 55 miles an hour. Who knows that? Okay. Who? Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Who believes that the speed limit is a suggestion, which actually means it's 10 miles an hour over the speed limit? Raise your hand. Like, if you're going 10 miles an hour over, cops really shouldn't pull you over because it's just, just a suggestion. Okay, who thinks it's 15? All right, who thinks it's 20? All right. Anybody think it's 25? Who wants it to be 25 over? All right, I do too. Um, and all right, anybody think that the speed limit at 55 means it's at 55? I got two in the back. All right. <laughs> so... All right, so we've had a lot of different answers here, which means we have a lot of people, a lot of different people who have differing views on what's right and what's wrong, right? So some of you think it's right to go 55. Some of you think it's right to go 65, 70, 75. Would you all agree that we have some differing views on what's right and what's wrong? All right. So I think that's one thing that happens in today's society a lot of differing views on what's right and what's wrong. Fortunately for us, though, we have the Word of God, which is the ultimate authority over what is right and what's wrong. So that's where I'm going to base my decisions. That's where I'm going to base uh, this message for you guys is on what's right and what's wrong based on the Word of God. Can everybody agree with me there that you'll, you'll come in agreement with at least that 
even if you don't think that that's right, that, hey, Mr. Carozo think that that's, that that's right, and that's where I'm gaining my authority here. All right. Um, anybody ever give a speech or have to talk in front of their class and then get lost at where you're at? All right, that's where I'm at right now. So a little empathy, a little love, all right? Um, so the world may say that it's, it's okay to give in to that or this, um, but if it's clearly outlined in Scripture, we must follow the Bible and not give in to this, not give in to that, or not give in to the desire to do something wrong. Again, going back to temptation. So now we know temptation is the desire to do something wrong and the definition of wrong is based on a biblical principle, a biblical worldview. Does everybody agree? Outstanding. I just wanted to get us all on the same page. So I want to talk to you about some people in the Bible who were tempted, who were tempted to do some of their wrong things and some of their outcomes. Some, some, some decided to do the right thing, some decided to do the wrong thing. So three people who I'm going to talk about today there's Jesus, Peter, and Judas. So we have three very different people all at the same time frame, right? So Jesus, he was tempted in three different ways. And then in a different part of Scripture, it says he was tempted in every way that we are, except he didn't sin, except he is without sin. So Hebrews 4.15, we see Jesus here where it says, For we do not have a high priest, Jesus, who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted, tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. But I want to talk about three specific ways that Jesus was tempted. Because um, a lot of times we say, all right, he was tempted in every single which way, but Give us some uh, specifics here. So three ways that Jesus was tempted. He was tempted directly by Satan, right? One way, when Jesus was hungry, he was fasting. Anybody ever fast? I have. I get really hungry. Ask Mrs. Carozo. Apparently, I get hangry too. I don't think I get hangry, but she tells me I do. I believe her. Um, so when Jesus was hungry, he was tempted by Satan to turn stones into bread. He said no. Later on, he was tempted to throw himself from the highest point of the temple in order for the angels to catch him. Again, he said no. And then he was tempted by the devil. It says if Jesus worshipped the devil, then he could have all the kingdoms in the world in return. Again, Jesus said no. So those are three very specific ways that Jesus was tempted. So remember how I said, hey, you're in good company because I'm raising my hand? Well, if you're tempted, you're in really good company because Jesus was tempted too. Does that make sense? Gentlemen? All right. So now I want to talk about Peter. So let's, have, let's talk about Peter. We have a disciple of Jesus Christ, another, ma another man who was tempted, just like Jesus was. Uh, his temptation, I would say, is a simple temptation. Participation time. And my hand is already up because I know the question. Has anybody ever been tempted to lie? Teachers, I know your hands are up. <laughs> um, again, you guys are in good company. Um, I, can, I can say, if I was a betting man, that every single person in here has been tempted to lie. If I were a betting man, I would bet that every single person in here has lied. Let me tell you about a time that I lied. So I was young, much younger than, than all of you. I was in elementary school. And I don't know why I remember this so vividly, but my mom made jello. She made jello and she put it in the fridge. I can't tell you what color the jello was, but for the sake of this story, well, let's say it was red because red jello is probably the best. And I wanted to see if the jello was ready. But being in third grade, I stuck my little finger in it and it wasn't ready. I didn't think about it, but it left a little fingerprint. Later on in the day, my father comes home from work. He opens up the fridge and goes, who stuck their finger in the jello? Not thinking. I scream from the other room, it wasn't me. He didn't even ask me if I stuck my finger in the jello. I was just like, such a guilty conscience. It wasn't me. I remember that so vividly. My dad was like, yeah, okay. 
Now I know exactly who it was. Um, and I was still tempted to lie. So I was tempted to lie in the moment. I did lie in the moment. Um, and then I had to go back to him. So similarly, right? So we have Peter. Let me explain Peter a little bit, right? So I explained myself in third grade, little young kid, probably doesn't really know too much better, right? But I definitely know that I shouldn't lie at that point. Peter definitely knows as, a, as an adult that he shouldn't lie. This guy is, is a bold guy. Peter, when in defense of Jesus, grabbed a sword and chopped off someone else's ear in defense of Jesus. Again, Peter, being a bold guy, said that if everyone else deserted Jesus, he wouldn't. If everyone else deserted Jesus, Peter stood there and said, I won't. I won't desert you, Jesus. I'll defend you. And then he even backs those words up. But he finds himself tempted. Again, his temptation to lie, one that we've all encountered, one that uh, I'll say for myself that I have done before. I have lied. Um, So Peter's lie? Peter lied three times in a row. Right? When asked three different times after Jesus' arrest, Peter was asked if he knew Jesus. Each time he said, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Why? Because of fear. See, Peter feared man more than the consequences that would follow the truth. See, he was afraid that man was going to arrest him. He was afraid that those who arrested Jesus were going to arrest him if he said, I know Jesus. Anybody else ever think that way about a lie, right? Mr. Carrozzo comes walking down the hall. Were you on your cell phone? No. No. You sure I didn't just see you on your cell phone, take it from your right hand, shut it off, and stick it in your right front pocket? No, no, Mr. Carrozzo. No. Are you afraid of me and my consequences more than the consequences of telling a lie? Are you afraid that I'm going to take away your cell phone? Are you afraid of that more than you're afraid of the consequences of a lie, the consequences of a sin? I hope not. I don't want you to be afraid of me more than afraid of sin and, and death. All right. Last, we have Judas. Out of the three, three people, we spoke about Jesus, we spoke about Peter, and now we're going to speak about Judas. Judas, like Peter, knew Jesus. He walked with Jesus and he lived alongside Jesus. See, I'm always interested to see and and read about guys like Judas and Peter who knew the truth better than any of us and still fell into temptation. See, unlike Peter's Peter's temptation, which was to lie, Judas' temptation was gold. All right, who likes money in here? I do. I like money. I do. I don't worship money, but I definitely like it. All right. So maybe we, we all have a little desire for money like Judas, but hopefully we don't go to where Judas went, right? Unlike Peter, where Peter was put on the spot, he didn't think, all right, you know what? I'm going to walk down this road, and if I get asked if I know Jesus, I'm going to say no. Judas, on the other hand, his actions, his, his temptation was premeditated. Right? He was tempted to do something, but then he premeditated some actions afterwards. So Luke 22, 4 says, And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. So he thought about this beforehand, right? And they all agreed with Judas and ended up betraying Jesus for silver and gold. So Judas had a desire for money, and then he worked it out with the chief priests, and then he got that money by acting on that temptation. So, we have three guys here, all tempted, all made three different choices, right? And what what were the consequences for their choices? We're going to talk about that. Well, Jesus, well, he's Jesus. What are his consequences? He's perfect in every single which way. So he is the son of God. His consequences, he's sitting the right hand of, of his father right now uh, for being Jesus. None of us are going to be perfect like Jesus. Um, I'm not going to be perfect like Jesus. You're not going to be perfect like Jesus. But he died for us so that we can be in front of him 
and his father one day. I absolutely love it. That's a different message. Then we have Peter, right? A disciple of Christ who, like Jesus, uh, knew the difference between right and wrong and didn't always choose what was right. Sound about right to you guys? Peter knew the difference between right and wrong but didn't always do what was right. He tried to. He said he would. He said he wouldn't desert Jesus if everybody else did. He knew what was right, said I would do what's right, but then still fell into, into temptation. Does that sound like anybody here too? Me. But what did he do after, right? So immediately after Peter remembered how Jesus said before then, before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. It's then written that Peter, when he remembered this, and he realized that he did exactly what Jesus said he was going to do, which is lie, he couldn't control his outward emotions, and he wept. He repented. Peter, at this point, he was so overwhelmed at his repentant heart that he wept. Later, then, we read about the rehabilitation of Peter and his role in the early church. So he was able to move forward. So he had a temptation. He fell into that temptation. Man, he repented. And then he was able to rehabilitate that by moving forward and, and having a big role in who we are as Christians today. And now we have Judas. Similar to Peter, he knew the difference between right and wrong and didn't always choose what was right. He premeditated it. He premeditated his wrong act. Judas planned it out, and he pulled others into his plan to betray Jesus. After Judas fell into the temptation of gold, like Peter, he did repent. He tried to. He brought the money back to the chief priests and elders, but they essentially told him, nah, not our problem. You deal with it. You acted on the sin. You sinned. You deal with it. Unlike Peter, Judas didn't have the chance of rehabilitation. So I like to bring this all back to us, right? Does anybody find themselves somewhere in any of these stories, right? Maybe. Maybe you're the Peter, right? And maybe you're a little bit of everything, right? So I'll just keep it on me. Maybe I'm a Peter at one point where I go, not really thinking about the temptation, but all of a sudden it's presented and I go, oh man, I'm going to do the wrong thing. Man, that feels junky. Maybe I'm the Judas. Maybe in my life I've, I've seen something and I go, hmm, I'm going to think about this. I know it's wrong to do that, but I can get away with it if I do X, Y, and Z. Maybe I'm the high priest. My friend sees something wrong. My friend sees something wrong that he can do. And he says, hey, Mr. Carozo, you see that over there? You want to do it with me? You want to go into that area that, that says no trespassing? Ooh, that looks like fun. You want to break into Duck Stadium? Mm, that sounds like fun. Right? So where do you see yourself in here, right? And although sometimes we will be able to resist temptation because the Lord gives us an out, um, none of us are going to be perfect like Jesus who was able to resist every temptation. So we all know that we will sin at one point. So that also means that we need to look at Peter and Judas more so in this situation than Jesus, right? He was, Peter was put on the spot. He didn't premeditate lying. He didn't plan to sin, but did anyway. Judas, on the other hand, he actively sought out conversation with the chief priests, and he sinned. His sin was planned and organized. Both of them have consequences. Scripture, in James 4.17, says, whoever knows, right thing, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is a sin, or for her it is a sin. It is a sin. So that's why I keep on interchanging temptation and action with sin, right? So now let's think through some of the, the temptations here. One of the biggest temptations that I've spoken to many students, maybe not 
exactly all of you, but I've had many students before you as well. Uh, it, it actually relates directly to school. And that's the temptation to cheat, right? So I like to bring a very real perspective on what temptation can look like and what redemption can look like. So if we break down cheating like, like Peter and Judas, we might have two different versions of it. One happens, I'll say, somewhat by chance, and the other is premeditated. All right, so let's talk about, I'll say, our peating, 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 wow. Okay, so that's Peter and cheating all in one word. Um, it's our Peter cheating. Our Peter cheating. You're sitting there, your neighbor isn't covering up their exam. You're not exactly actively looking for it, but you see an answer on the sheet that maybe you don't have. The answer is C, because when in doubt, see it out. Um, sorry, don't go on that. Teachers, I'm sorry, I gave them bad advice. If you don't know the answer, it, the answer isn't always C. Um, yep, yep, that's cheating. Thomas, are you laughing because you found yourself in this situation before? Oh, the lucky C. Interesting. I haven't heard that one. Well, let's talk about that one over, over lunch. All right. <clears throat> um, so we'll say that that's the Peter type of cheating. The, I'm not intending to. I didn't really think about it. A cheating opportunity arose, and now I caught myself in it, and I acted on that temptation. Right? Then we have the Judas te cheating. So now we have another student who decides that, oh, we're, we have a Bible test, and that student didn't prepare. Instead, the time that they could have taken to prepare, what they did was they did like Judas did. They, they premeditated, right? They wrote down as many scripture verses as possible in a location that the teacher may not see. I'm not going to give examples because I have too many. And I don't want to give you guys ideas. Clearly cheating, because I don't want to be like a Judas. I don't want to give you guys ideas, because Judas gave the high priest ideas, and I don't want to be like Judas, okay? So that's clearly cheating, right? And another, last for today, but not the last type of cheating, we have is plagiarism here, right? You use someone else's words from online, in a book, or wherever, right, without giving them proper citation and credit. These last two, I believe, are Judas types of cheating as well. Premeditated plagiarism, right? Does anybody not know what plagiarism is? Jeffrey, I'll talk to you later. And I know that you do. All right, sweet. And if you don't, that's okay. I think the best teachers to go to regarding this, and I'm going to put them on the spot right now, are your English teachers. So ask your English teachers, all right? Um, I say that with a mother who is an English teacher, and she taught me very well exactly what plagiarism was. Um, both your Peter type of cheating and your Judas type of cheating, just like Peter and Judas, have consequences, which in our situation can include zeros for any assignment found cheating on or plagiarized, written assignments due to me, and even being expelled from Smithtown Christian School. And I don't want to see any of those happen. But both, like the case with Peter, can have repentance and then redemption afterwards. So I leave you with this. Every single one of us will be tempted in life. Every single one of us has been tempted in life. But Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So anytime you guys are tempted with whatever sin you're tempted with, look for that way out. Look for that way out and be able to say no to that temptation. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord. I thank you for, for Smithtown Christian School. I thank you for each and every single one of these students, Lord. I know that they will walk through temptations as I have, as all of our teachers have before them, Lord God. I just pray that you just 
clearly show them their way out, Lord God. I just pray that you allow them to walk with our teachers through these temptations as well. And I pray that the teachers and myself are that way out, Lord God, and that you just allow them to see that way out and walk in that way instead of falling to temptation, Lord. I thank you for them again today. I just pray that you just give them an amazing, amazing rest of the day, Lord. We just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.